not a frisbee, Django. He had a ton of records. And he had that whole shtick that he was from another planet. I think people still to this day kind of almost believe it. The stuff that he was doing is just so odd. And so ahead of its time. I have a lot of Django cow. I think like, this probably gotta be my favorite of all time. I would love to hear what someone like JJ Kale would do now. This is like one of my most special things. This isn't even mine, this is a friend's that's been passed around. And I think, I think they bought it when they were in America in this old vinyl store. And it's just a live concert. Jimmy McGriff and Drew Holmes. In the old house I used to live in with one of my friends, he would come home from work every day and we would like just chill in the kitchen and talk and put this vinyl on. And we always used to slow it down because it was so, it's so gnarly if you play it at the right speed. They're just crazy, crazy players. Everything on this record is just so tight. It's like a 70s cop film. <laughs> Must have. I have a lot of cliches in here. That's okay. And there's a couple. <laughs> Respect. Kendrick. Respect. <laughs> this is actually an amazing record, Missy Elliott. The beats on this are so good, like proper good. That goes on. It's just that. Non stop. Even <laughs> the sound of the drums, so. I wish I was that drummer. <laughs> cool. So, the bass playing is insane, and the drumming is insane. I think this really, um, this has been sitting in my brain for a long time, this, this kind of sound. And probably on the, on the latest record, I was referencing this a fair bit, as far as vibes. That's a pretty brilliant Paul Simon record. Still crazy after all these years. Oh. One of those records where like, it's just pure good songwriting. This is a friend of mine. It's a brilliant songwriter. Stolen violin. It's probably like a vinyl that gets played in this house a lot. Should I keep that playing? This is probably the most meaningful album to me. As in the album that's been there since I could remember really liking music and wanting to be a songwriter and stuff. Complete opposite vibe to this, but equally as impressive. <laughs> this was a recent find that was playing in a vinyl store that I was in in Perth. I was just like a gold mine. It had so much cool stuff in there. And this was, yeah, this was on. And as I was walking out, the guy that owned the show, I had a good chat with him about a lot of stuff. And he just like grabbed it off the thing and put it in the case. He's like, take this. So I think you'll really like it. I was like, I actually do. This is really, really cool. And um, this gets played a lot at home as well, actually. That's well timed. You know what I mean though, by the... Oh, yeah. It's like... There's so much trouble now, but I don't care. I guess everyone was just on like some sort of musical crack back then. Speaking of cool songs... I think this song is another big uh, inspiration. Oh, <laughs> 
Apparently this is an original pressing. Which it kind of feels like one, it's that flimsy. Frank Zappa and the Mothers. Have you heard this? I hadn't heard it either. I think there's a lot of Frank Zappa stuff out there. It's like I'm skipping forward on the record, but it's, it's, it's um, unbelievable. And the playing is just so tight and like, it's all these different time signature changes and like, oh, it's just so weird. It's so cool.